almost a year ago now, I did a video where I started doing a performance upgrade to my Defender's 300 TDI engine. I didn't finish the full transformation and I only installed the boost pin because to get to the boost ring and the rest of the kit, I chickened out because mine is an air conditioned version and that means access was a problem. Is a problem. Still a problem. And today I figured it's time to put on a pair of big boy pants and get this job finished because I want to see what the full transformation feels like. And so the next part to fit in this process is the boost ring and it goes all the way down in there. But as I was saying, access is an issue. So the aircon compressor and the belt tensioner needed to be moved out of the way. It's a fairly simple job of slacking off the tensioner and removing the belt making a mental note of how it's rooted, super important for later, then removing the bolts holding down the compressor. I initially thought the entire aircon system would need to be removed, but someone commented in the previous boost pin video telling me that because it had flexible hoses, I could just move it out the way. Something I reckon I should have noticed. So I fished an old strap out of the workshop and tied the compressor to the bull bar moving it up and out of the working area. Now that I can even just see where the boost ring has got to go, let me show you what the boost ring looks like. It's basically a metal spacer that goes on the fuel pump and changes the timing and delivery of the fuel, helping to increase power in the higher revs or something. But before I can even get a tool onto it, I had to remove a bolt that was in the way. It had nothing to do with the fuel pump, it was just collateral damage. It's a number 10 spanner and the bolt went in there. And because this is a fuel system, I didn't want to introduce any dirt, so I gave it a brush down before I opened anything up. And the next hour or so was one of the most confusing and frustrating hours of my life. The original bolts are a T30 or a Torx 30 head. And the only T30 tool I had was a bit instead of a T30 wrench. So I spent ages trying to cobble together something that could fit into this tiny gap and give me enough purchase to crack the thread lock and undo these bolts. I can't get a tool in there to hold this and I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm trying to rig up a system from my bike tools. I've got a little crow's foot 7mm spanner which fits this back end of the T30 but it's not secure obviously so this just keeps falling out so i'm trying to wrap some tape around just so i could wedge it in so it can stay in place that's all i need and then that can go in there and then i've got myself a little thing well let's hope it works it probably won't my prediction is that the t30 piece is going to drop out fall somewhere into the engine bay and i'll never find it again and i don't have another one here goes the maiden voyage of the most complicated T30 tool in history and immediately I told you as predicted but what inventor gives up on his design after 73 attempts but after a bit of time and six different iterations of the T30 3000 spanner wrench I think I got there with a little bit of ingenuity a little shifting spanner, a bit of blue tack, and a T30 point wedged it in there. Gave me a little bit of down pressure, cracked that little sucker out of there. Now hopefully I can just use my fingers and get it out. Again with the optimism. It still took ages because there's a spring inside. Nay, two springs inside, pushing against you, hoping you'll fail. So I turned to the T30 ohmmeter tool once again and... And there it comes out. These two demonic springs sit on top of a stack of washers or spacers. The kit comes with an additional three spacers which need to go in on top of the springs and then the boost ring goes on between the fuel pump and the top bit which took forever to remove. Oh, and don't forget the O-rings because it will leak diesel everywhere if you do. And if you have a keen eye, you might be able to see that I had the boost ring on upside down. The O-ring should be sitting against the top bit and the second O-ring against the fuel pump. So I installed it like this and only realized when diesel wouldn't stop pouring out of it, 
so I took it all apart again and redid it correctly. The kit came with slightly longer hex head bolts so it was a ton easier the second time around as I could just use a ball ended 5mm hex wrench but still super annoying to have to do it all over again but at least it was done properly now minus one of the shims. Wow that didn't go as planned at all but it's in. I lost completely the thinnest little shim that's supposed to be in there. I don't know where it is. It's gone somewhere forever. But I figured if they can put in three spaces that are like this thick then one tiny little shim should make all the difference. Uh, but that was on the inner spring. Well I guess we're gonna see. So if you know how important that little shim is please let me know in the comments if I need to get another one in ASAP. I then just reversed the process and put everything back the way it was supposed to be. Well, I think all is as it should be. Let's hope anyway. I hate sucking at stuff. All right, let's uh, let's fire it up and see what happens. Well, it starts. I don't know what it drives like. Oh, Land Rover is so stressful. Right, it's the next morning. It rained yesterday afternoon, so I had to stop there. But there's one more piece of the puzzle left, this Turbo Boost controller. I don't know how I feel about that because it's kind of mucking around with stuff that I don't really want to be mucking around with. But I figured if I set it as close to minimum as possible, I can't go too wrong, can it? Okay, first things first, I need to remove... Okay, wait, no, wait. First things first, I need to read the instructions and make sure I understand them. Then I remove the intake to the turbo and the little pipe that goes between the turbo and the waste. That's the pipe. Right, so this joining pipe that goes between the turbo and the wastegate, these are words that I feel I just made up. I don't know what they are, don't know what they do. Everybody just says, boost, 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 more boost. What? I don't even know what boost is. But here we are. This pipe that's come out will be replaced with these two and this will go in the middle somehow and connect the two and you can control whatever boost is with this thing. Something in there. This side of the new line goes on the turbo side with a little pinch clip. Okay. That's it, it's in. And it's the same on the wastegate side. Okay. Right, next up is the actual boost controller, this manual thing to set whatever boost is, the ghost in the engine that gives you more power, who knows. According to the diagram, the bottom goes to the turbo pipe, the side goes to the wastegate pipe. Sounds simple enough. Now because it was a push on type fit, I heated up the end of the pipe to soften it, making it more cooperative when trying to install the boost controller. And it worked like a charm. The next challenge was to find an appropriate position to mount the boost controller. Not as straightforward as expected, but we don't do things in life because they're easy, we do them because we think they're easy. Okay, well it's in, and I know there's probably people that are cringing to death out there or the way I installed it, but I'm gonna set this now to its bare, bare minimum, so it's basically just mimicking this pipe, right? And then I'll start it up, see how it goes, do a test drive and see if I can see any difference. According to the info on the boost controller instructions, if you wanted to set it to the minimum, it needs to be completely wound out and locked off with the locking nut. But I started with it wound in a couple turns, just to see what it did. The engine seemed to be starved of fuel or air when it came down off the revs. I didn't like that very much. That I kept tweaking the boost controller until that starvation wobble seemed to reduce to a minimum. And then I decided I should take it out for a test drive. All right, let's go for a drive. At this point my brain is split in two. 
One part worried that the engine is going to be destroyed because of something that I've done, and the other part is trying to assess and feel what improvement there's been to the way it drives. There's a slightly more noticeable shunt from the turbo now, so it's got me thinking. I guess it feels a little bit more peppy, but like I said, I wanted to stay on the real stock standard edge of this whole arc, right? I don't want to push it and have blue smoke shooting out the back. And I'm not interested in that. I want to preserve this engine. I just want a little bit more, a little bit more performance out of it. I carried on to where I knew there was a decent hill to climb, as this should be a good test. And to be honest, it actually handled the hill really, really well. I don't think the standard 300 TDI engine without these upgrades would make it up without having to at least drop a gear. Alright, let's see what's going on under here. The boost controller was stable and still locked in place, but I felt it was running a little hotter than usual. This could be my imagination because I was worried I'd mess something up because the temperature gauge was fine and the exhaust gas temperatures only got to about 480. So, by all accounts, it looks and sounds pretty nice. Let's just turn off. I feel like I'm destroying the serenity of the South Downs National Park here. I'm wondering if I actually like this or not. It just adds a level of complexity and concern that you don't really want to do with a Land Rover. I might ditch the boost controller seems like it's making things run really hot or maybe I'm just a wuss and I don't really have a stomach for this kind of thing but I don't fancy blowing up my engine I'll tell you that all right let's get back to HQ Okay, let's sum up. I'm not after faster. I want a little bit more power, a little bit more drivability, so it's easier and nicer to live with. I don't want to rag it with blue smoke coming out the back. This is going to be a long distance overland vehicle. And I've had some experience with that. I, I took a Discovery 1 300 TDI across the entire length of Africa. And it was a wonderful platform to do overlanding on. Very simple, easy to repair. And that's what I want with this vehicle. But I also want a little bit of refinement. Have I got that? Well, it's been so long since I've driven the stock 300 TDI engine that it's very difficult for me to say. If I can somehow objectively remove myself and look at it, there's not a humongous difference. It just feels more refined and a little bit quicker to pick up on the power. So is it worth it? Yeah, I think for a hundred bucks, I think it is worth it. I'm just worried about adding a layer of complexity into a Land Rover. I'll drive it around for a little bit and I'll see how I go, but I might take it back to stock. The next question I can hear you saying is what about fuel consumption? That I've not really noticed a difference over the last 12 months. In terms of MPG, I haven't noticed a huge difference. It might be using slightly more fuel, but I think that that's worth it for the drivability that it gives you. So I think it's, I think it's a good trade-off. I think the stock 300 TDI is fine. And the one I took through Africa was stock. There was no boost pins and boost rings and everything. And it was fine. I mean, we broke down once in Kenya, but that was a water pump issue. It's up to you. It's a great little experiment. And what's nice is that it's reversible. So you can take these components out and go back to stock very, very easily. Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it as it is. I will probably take it to Gumtree 4x4, my local Landy specialists, and just get them to have a look at it and just get their take on it and see where we come out but for now I'm enjoying it so if you fancy having a go and upgrading and getting a bit more performance out of your 300 TDI engine I hope this has helped I hope you've enjoyed watching please do subscribe and I will see you on the next one